Here lies the infamous spoon, recently recovered from the fires of Mordor, now returning to its rightful place here in Vilichka. Today we find ourselves in the city of Vilichka, first founded around 1120 and gained its city rights around 1290. Its location is found within the metropolitan area of Krakow and Lesser Poland. The current estimated population is somewhere around 24,000. Easily accessible by train from the Krakow city center, which includes direct routes from the local airport, or by car with an easy connection to the A4 highway. If you decide to come by car, you can park directly in the city center. Parking during the weekends is free of charge. The history of the area reaches all the way back to the Neolithic times, aka the Stone Age. The region was full of salt springs. Salt was commonly used as a food preservative, as it still is to this day. At the turn of the 12th century, the springs began to dry up. The people began to dig wells and extract the salt from the water by heating huge iron pans. Moving on to the 13th century, while digging a well, the first lumps of rock salt were accidentally found. This discovery was a revolution as this white gold could now be mined. During the expansion of the mining operation, an administration facility had to be built. The castle Zupne, translated to the Saltworks Castle, was built in the middle of the 13th century and continued to serve its purpose for over 700 years. Here we have a model of the castle. Starting with the southern building, which is the newest, built in 1836, with a second floor being added in 1905. Moving on to the middle building, which is the oldest, now housing the museum part of the castle, and to the left of it are the remains of the old kitchen. In between the buildings, you can find the old access way to the salt mines. Workers would use this tunnel to enter and exit, along with having direct access to the canteen during their break times. Moving on, here we can find the fence tower. Once counting 19 of them, this is unfortunately the only one remaining. And finally, the north part, built soon after the middle building in the first half of the 14th century. Starting with the northern building, it was built to house tallow. Tallow was used to light the mine. Additional rooms were available in the building to house the members of the administration. The basement was used as a prison, also known as a groch. This was also the location of the chapel of St. Stanislaus, but it was destroyed during the Swedish deluge. Next up, we can move to the newest part. We find ourselves taking a look at the southernmost building. As luxurious as it may look, don't be fooled, as this was built to be a horse stable. With additional space to house the maintenance staff, the utilities equipment, the fire extinguish equipment, and provide storage. Nowadays in this building, we would normally have a fully functioning restaurant where we could taste the local cuisines. But because of COVID times, this unfortunately will not be possible. To our backs, we can find the Royal Park. Once visited by kings, queens, and all sorts of noblemen now being entertained by young people listening to rap music and drinking beer. Of course, this wouldn't be Poland if there wasn't a John Paul II aisle somewhere in every single city and all across the country. You might think that these are some old defense walls for the castle, but the truth is this was actually the first canteen that was created just for the workers of the salt mine so they could have their meals every day. And this included not only the salt mine workers and administration, but also the delivery men and even the buyers. The best part though, that it was all free of charge. The canteen started its operations in the 14th century and continued all the way to the mid 16th century when the salt mine entered its first financial crisis. As it generated the highest cost of operations, it only made sense for it to first hit the chopping block. 
as you can see here, the finest cuisines were mixed with this spoon. The fact of the matter though is that the canteen served soup as the only menu option. Here's actually a fragment of the original defense wall. Here are also a few visual representations of how the castle evolved throughout the times. Moving on to the next part of the castle, the defense tower. This tower is the only remaining medieval fortress left in the city. During the reign of King Kazimir the Great, the city was encircled within a wall featuring two gates and 19 towers. This tower is all original, built in the Gothic era. Let's see if we can take a look inside. That's enough. An interesting fact about the tower was that the bottom level of the tower housed a prison, while the top level housed a chapel. Additional CCTV cameras were placed during the Middle Ages to make sure that nobody stole any soup from the main kitchen. Taking a look at the side of the building, we can actually see an opening. Maybe we can take a look what's inside. Unfortunately, not much is visible. It's now time to move on to the main part of the castle. Inside is a museum of the Saltworks Castle. We first start off by taking a tour of the Salt Shaker Collection. Salt was once considered a luxury item, and it was termed as white gold. These types of salt shakers were only taken out when you wanted to show off for your guests. Some sets were really extravagant, being made completely out of gold. Here we have a tool deemed a dog. The salt gnomes used to use this to transport salt within the salt mine. We now enter the municipal room, considered the most glamorous chamber in the castle. With its rib vault restings on the columns, it gives off its 14th century gothic design. The room now is mostly used for art displays and wedding ceremonies. Additionally, we can find some of the original artwork of the Saltwork Administration workers on the walls. The castle offers many more interesting artifacts and exhibitions in its collection, but the rest I'll leave for you to discover. If you'd like to see more castles across Poland and not only, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions, leave your comments down below and I'll do my best to answer them.